The following study describes a large tear with full thickness communication. First, we'll describe a brief anatomy review, starting with the humeral head covered by articular hyaline cartilage, the bicep tendon as it passes through the biceps groove, the supraspinatus tendon as it attaches to the anterior aspect of the greater tuberosity, the infraspinatus tendon as it attaches to the posterior aspect of the greater tuberosity, the conjoined portion of the tendon which makes up approximately one-third of the middle aspect of the greater tuberosity's footprint. The anterior margin is strictly supraspinatus. The posterior margin is strictly infraspinatus, but approximately 1.5 to 2 centimeters posterior from the anterior margin of the greater tuberosity is purely supraspinatus. Approximately 1 centimeter of the remainder of the supraspinatus tendon is actually conjoined fibers of the infraspinatus tendon as well. Enveloping the bulk of the rotator cuff is the subacromial slash subdeltoid bursa as seen here. This illustration represents a transverse slice through the anatomy of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus. The main emphasis of this video will be to describe the relationship of the supraspinatus and bicep tendon at the level of the rotator interval. This is a typical transverse image of the supraspinatus tendon resting near the bicep tendon. Here we have highlighted the humeral head with articular cartilage over the head. Here we have the lateral deltoid muscle also imaged in a transverse orientation. This portion of the rotator cuff represents the true supraspinatus tendon. Shown here in the lower left corner is the bicep tendon. You can see here how close it follows the supraspinatus. We now turn the probe from a transverse slice of the tendon to a longitudinal slice of the tendon. This would be similar or comparative to a coronal slice on an MRI. Here is the representative long axis image of the supraspinatus tendon. Here we have the humeral head and greater tuberosity in profile, similar to a lateral radiograph or coronal MRI. Here we have the lateral deltoid muscle, which is also in long axis relative to the supraspinatus. Here is the true supraspinatus tendon at its lateral to anterior margin of the greater tuberosity. Here is a modified illustration from before showing in red representing edema within the deeper layers or articular surface of the supraspinatus tendon. We also see these changes in the tendon's echo texture. They become relatively hypoechoic compared to our normal images. Just to review again, we have highlighted here the bony cortex, the articular cartilage. Here is the layer that represents edema. And here would be the intact or normal echo texture of the supraspinatus tendon. Yellow would be the periversal fat. When the echo texture of edema becomes closer to simple fluid, you will notice what is called a cartilage interface sign. Again, blue representing hyaline cartilage. In this case, the lighter blue represents the cartilage interface sign, and the purple represents the layer of edema. It is also important to note that retraction of tendon fibers may also give a similar appearance. True edema will posteriorly enhance this cartilage interface sign. As we scan distally through the supraspinatus tendon, we see a few changes. There is a disruption in the bony cortex, followed by thin layers of the supraspinatus tendon resting on top of each other. These layers create a new potential space for free fluid or simple fluid to collect. Highlighted here in green is the intact infraspinatus tendon. Orange represents the thickened synovial layer of the subacromial bursa, and yellow is the periversal fat. When in doubt, always compress areas of simple fluid. Here is an illustration depicting the long axis of this tear. When imaging, the supraspinatus tendon and long axis rely on your bony landmarks. The blue represents the articular cartilage. The red represents the torn layer of the supraspinatus tendon. The white is the cortex of the humeral head and greater tuberosity, where the yellow represents the periversal fat layer and the purple represents the seemingly intact layer of the supraspinatus tendon. It is the compression of the probe that reveals a full thickness communication from the articular surface to the bursal surface of the supraspinatus tendon.